Okay, so our scene doesn't look super interesting right now, but let's, uh, I'm just gonna make a few adjustments, move some things around, and let's try make it a little more, a little more interesting. So let's maybe, um, so start with the camera, go to view. Because we're posting something to Instagram, let's just change it to 720. Um, so you'll see we get a nice big space to work with. Let's maybe change it to 200. And let's maybe move our camera in to say 40. Hmm. 45. Let's change our view from 1,800 maybe. Yeah. For now, let's do that. Cool. So let's go to our table. Just jump inside. Uh, let's move our sphere down. I'm just going to move away from the camera. Hit Control F so that we are looking at, uh, at our object. And let's just move this downwards so that it's sitting on our So right now it's sitting down there. Um, this dodecahedron is uh, is quite a simple um, simple shape right now. So let's just go to our transform, and then what you can do is if you hold down Alt and click on one of these um, wires, it will create a little dot here. And if I slide it over here, this one gets connected as well. Um, so that's just by holding down Alt and uh, clicking on any of these wires. Um, super handy. So from uh, from here, what we're going to do is hit Tab, throw down an Edit SOP, just go Edit, and what we are going to do is hit S, and then three, I believe, two to go to points, and then let's just hit Select again. Uh, let's select some of these points and then we can start transforming them around. Uh, let's maybe go up to the top. And let's hide everything. Cool. And let's maybe put on grid snapping. And now we should be able to move this around. So we're just trying to create something random. Uh, so I'm just using S um, and T. So hit S to select a point, and then hit T to get your transform tools um, up, and just start selecting and transforming these points around. Not much else to it. Let's go to our perspective view and see what we're doing. Let's maybe move this point. We're just hitting S, select point T, back up to the top view. Let's move this one like out here. Hit W to go to wireframe. S, T, snap it around. W, come out of wireframe, and let's see what that looks like now. And you'll notice that our poly wire just updated because it was built off of these edges. So, um, so that's a really nice feature. Let's go to transform. Let's ghost everything else, um, and let's just. Select the transform. Let's move it over to the left. Uh, it's on grid snapping. Um, let's move it back a little bit more. And let's scale down our sphere. Just so that it's a little bit more elegant. And then let's uh, move this guy up by 0.1. Let's maybe rotate him, 45. Mm. 
Hmm. That's somewhat interesting. Cool. So then let's um, let's just jump into our perspective view. Hit spacebar F. Um, let's get a little bit more intimate with these objects, um, and let's take our vase. Check out the camera. That's pretty interesting. Um, let's go into our vase. Let's change the shape of this a little bit. Uh, yep. Sweet, that's pretty cool. Let's throw down another tube for good measure. No oobs. We want tubes or boobs. <laughs> oh, okay. It's fine. Just going to save. So now we have this tube here. Um, again, let's uh, jump inside. Let's change this to a polygon. Let's change the orientation to z-axis. Let's bump up the columns here. Um, let's maybe make it a bit bigger. Um, I'm going to throw down a transform. And then rotate this. Let's go negative 35. And then Let's give it a few more columns, double it. Um, then let's just go extrude, poly extrude. And point one, let's output it back so that we get this nice looking shape. And then um, what we're going to do is then transform this up by three. Let's maybe go 3.5. That looks pretty cool. So um, what I'm going to do is um, we are going to take our tube. And before we translate it up, we're actually going to translate it down. So let's transform this by negative 1, I believe. Wait, what's the radius? 2. So it should be negative two. Cool. So now the top is um, at the at the origin. Let's just hit spacebar F to take a look. Um, so it's right at the top there. So now what we are going to do is we are going to take a line. Tab, type down line, and we get this line over here. If I enable points. Um, and view the line, you'll see that we have one, uh, one down there and then one at the top. And what I'm going to do is just, let's create a circle. So tab down circle. And then change it to the ZX plane, change it to a polygon so that when we view it, we have edges. Um, and then let's change this up to 50. Uh, let's make it 100. And then let's go extrude. Point 0.1. I'll put it back and view that. Cool. So now we have a little disk. And let's, because right now it's pointing down. Um, let's rotate this 180. So now it's pointing up. 
So whenever we extrude now, uh, it's going to go upwards. Cool. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this line and we're going to throw down a copy stamp. And we are going to see here it says primitives to copy. So we want to copy this uh, disk over here. And then over here it should say template to copy to. And we want to copy that to the points of this line. There we go. So now we have two disks on this line. And what we're going to do is we are going to take another poly wire. Throw it down, connect it. Let's make it again 0 0.01, give it 12 divisions. And then let's merge these two together by clicking M because of the shortcut we created and merging these together. So there we go. Um, so we can maybe go 0.25. Now, uh, what's cool about this is that now I can take the line and say I want it twice as long. Um, but now what this is doing, so the copy is currently um, copying our disk to however many points are on this line. So in the line, I can say points three, and see there, it adds another disk because it's picked up another point. So we can do more and more with this, you know, creating stairs, banisters, even buildings, everything. Uh, the copy stamp is super powerful. There are some great tutorials out there. Um, so yeah, check them out. For now, this is all we need to do, and this is about as basic as it comes. We are going to now take a merge and merge these two, select both of them, grab the lines, merge them in here. So now we have this structure. So our circle is super big. Let's take it down to like 0.5 maybe 0.35 and you'll see that it kind of slots into our our disk here which is what we want and just for the sake of it throw down another transform and transform this up by 0.05 there we go cool and we didn't really need this top one, but I just wanted to show you the copy stamp anyway. So now we can take this transform and move this down and view it there. And because we move this down by negative two, we need to add two to this transform to get us back. So 5.5 and let's have a look through our camera. Cool, that's essentially what I wanted. Um, and now I'm going to throw down another transform so that we can translate it. Um, and let's move this back by three. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, okay. So now let's move this behind everything. Let's see what that looks like. So now our box is kind of completely hidden out of the way. Um, to make it a little more interesting, I'm just going to save. Let's go to our box, our obelisk, um, and let's create something a little cooler. So. Uh, so instead of a box, let's um, let's just go back and grab our um, circle over here, so that we already have this extruded. Jump into our obelisk. Let's paste this. Let's check it out. Let's make our circle bigger. Let's make it bigger. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's make it about that big. 
I am going to move it around. I'm just going to throw down a transform. Anyway, hopefully you guys get the idea of what I'm doing here. Lots of transforms, lots of merges, lots of simple shapes, uh, at least for now, especially when um, starting off in Houdini, it can be super intimidating. So I'm hoping that um, that this um, tutorial series basically helps you kind of break down some of those bar barriers and uh, to be able to go from uh, a blank scene to a final product, which is uh, what we are building towards. So pretty sure that, uh, let's just bring up show all objects and let's do this and then I want to create another one so I can actually say transform just hold down alt and drag what I'm going to do I'm actually just gonna duplicate everything pretty much so I can make make my circle smaller now um, and then let's transform him up say 0.2 and then hit M to throw down another merge um, Again, I can be a lot smarter about this stuff, but uh, but for simple stuff like this, it's uh, it's pretty easy just to uh, to throw down some simple stuff and not worry too much about being as procedural as possible. I'll show you some really cool procedural stuff when it comes to shading and texturing. Um, so let's just bevel this bad boy. And let's say ignore flat edges. Let's go 0 0.01. Uh, use common limit. Change it to round. Okay, let's change the flatness angle. And there you go. So you see, we were um, we were beveling all of these edges. Um, but if we just change the flatness angle, we get rid of that. Um, and now we can change this up to like five. And we can also update our circle. Uh, so we can say 150 divisions. And it updates like that, um, which is nice. It's 150. Let's uh, just save quick. Let's hold down Alt, copy this poly bevel over to this side so that he gets a bit of a bevel. And I'm just going to move this down just a fraction because I want to make sure that it's intersecting. There we go. Let's maybe move it down a bit more. 0 0.08. Cool. Um, and let's just do one more. Let's move this guy up. Point one six. Point two, maybe. Let's make our circle smaller again. And you see what I'm doing. Basically building a little, uh, a little, what, like a cake stand? Yeah, cake stand. So I'm just trying to pretty it up a little bit. Something like that. Uh, he's a bit high. Cool, something like that. Check out our camera. So it's looking pretty interesting. Uh, let's go to our vase. Let's move this into the center. There we go, something like that. Um, and then Move this guy over a little bit. So you'll notice like sometimes I translate things over at the object level, um, but usually I don't actually like to do that. I'd rather uh, control everything up here, so it, uh, we're down here so that it doesn't get super confusing. Um, I'm just gonna right click and say, 
a line handle to world. Now I'm just moving it over in X just to get a little bit of separation. Um, let's do something like that. And then you know what we're going to do? We are going to check out our render. Let's see what this looks like. Save this one. Hit render. Cool. So we have something a little bit more interesting. OK. So it looks pretty interesting. I'm just going to make a couple more tweaks. Let's go to our scene view. Um, let's take our table over here. Let's translate it over. Make our sphere a bit smaller and move it up because I like it when it's hovering. Cool. And then instead of our vars being front and center, let's um, let's go to our transform. Just gonna hit Control F to zoom into it, and then let's put it up on our cake stand over here. This is where the top view comes in handy. Just place things easily, just like that. So okay. let's call this cake stand. And then what we are going to do is Let's move this sucker. You'll see the, uh, the pivots over here because we've now moved it in on the object level, which is pretty, pretty annoying. Anyway, so you'll see what kind of issues you can run into with uh, transforming everything at the object level. So what I'm actually going to do is, this is a good thing to know. So this is what we'll do. So instead of these two objects being separate, uh, these two objects being separate, I'm going to jump into the cake stand. And then I'm going to hit tab, type object, object merge, throw down an object merge node. And then object one, we're just going to click here and go up to our our vase, and then what we want is transform one. Just to quickly illustrate, I'll show you. If we go to vase, and just hit tab, type down a null, and then let's write out vase, and jump in. Let's hide the vase, and then jump into our cake stand. And in the object merge, if we go back to our uh, vars, we should see out vars, which is what we just created, which is the bottom of our node graph. And that's what we want. So now if we go here, we should be able to see our vars. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this transform and move it to the center of that. And then let's hit M for merge again. And then let's merge these together. And that is not where the center is. OK. So. I'm going to get rid of this now. I'm just going to get rid of those transforms. 
So now we can work at the origin. And let's just move this up by 0.1 and this one up by 0.2. And then let's take this, which was created at the origin, but it was moved. So let's jump back into our vase. Let's get rid of this. So you now see our vase jumps back to the center, go into our cake stand. Let's throw down another transform. Let's move it up by 0.5. And then let's throw down another transform. And move this stuff back to where we want it. So now everything's moving in one. It really makes things easier to, uh, to control. So there is a uh, kind of like a side effect <laughs> to that. So I will show you that when, uh, when we start getting into materials. Cool, let's uh, have a look at our camera. And it's looking somewhat interesting. It's a bit more interesting than it was. Let's go 0.2 maybe. And three and four. Let's go to point four. Point three nine. Point four is good enough. Cool. So now, lastly, just to uh, show you guys some more copy stamping, quick. Let's let's get something interesting going in here. Cool, let's go to our, um, our tube over here. And let's jump inside. So, if we take a look at our tube. Cool. Here we go, it's at the center. And working from the center is always a good thing. Let me show you some more stuff. Okay went to dark, so I'm just gonna go to background. Oh. We are on light. Uh, cool. Okay, so here we have our tube, which is basically hanging from the ceiling in our scene. And what we want to do is let's create a circle. Not an Urkel. Circle. Cool. Let's, ma let's make it a primitive, I mean a polygon again. Let's make it, uh, say 1.5, uh, let's go 1.75. Let's give it 24 divisions. So if we enable our points, um, you'll be able to see that we have a circle here with 24 points. And first off with this one, first I'm gonna just, uh, let's just go with a poly wire down at the bottom here, poly wire, set it to 0 0.02, plug it in, and here we have a nice wire, let's make it 100, hide our points, so now we just have a tube. So let's merge this together, like that, and now if we uh, bring back our, or if we just go down to the bottom here. So this is the position that we have made our object. And if we just merge this in, we will now get a circle in the middle, just like that. So let's go to cam one. And sweet. So I just thought of something. So to make our lives a little easier, what we are going to do is, let's just throw down a regular copy. Copy and transform. So I'm just gonna plug this in here. And what we're gonna do is total number, let's just make it say eight, and let's rotate it along the x-axis by say 10 degrees. There we go. Cool. 
uh, let's say negative 10 degrees. And now we get this interesting shape over here. So essentially what we're doing is we're just saying take this object that we just created and copy it eight times and rotate each instance uh, 10 degrees. So if I go four, it's still going in increments of 10, but there's only four copies. So I mean, we can go to say 24 and we get basically a sphere now. And you can get some really, let's, let's play with this a bit. You can get some pretty interesting things here. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, you can start translating it as well. So, you know, now we're just moving each instance by one, uh, one meter. You can go to 10 centimeters. You know, uh, the list goes on. You can scale it in X. Um, and each increment will get slightly bigger and bigger. Uh, anyway, you get the point. Uh, there's some really interesting stuff that, uh, that you can do with this. And uh, for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep it on, say, 8. Let's make it a little tighter, maybe 5 degrees. Let's actually see what it looks like in the camera. And then let's view this down here. That's pretty cool. Uh, we can actually, let's make this one smaller. Uh, let's go 1.25. Uh, let's give it a bit more. Cool. Something like that. Then what I'm going to do is let's take the circle and for now I'm just going to merge it back in here by hitting M and let's view our endpoint. So our circle needs to be bigger. Let's go back to 1.75. If I turn on points here, uh, just from our circle we have a bunch of points. Um, and what I'm going to do is let's maybe give it 150. I'm going to create a sphere. Let's just tab down a sphere. And then let's change it to 0 0.5. So we have a tiny little sphere. And then let's throw down a copy stamp. And again, we want the primitives to copy and where we want to copy it to. And let's plug this in here. So now we have a, a circle of spheres. Cool. Let's just change this uh, to 0 0.25. Uh, change it to a polygon. Set the frequency to 10. And then what I'm going to do is, because that's going to get quite heavy, um, where it says stamp, say stamp inputs and pack geometry before copying. Uh, so now it's copying, now it's just one sphere, um, and for each point, it is just generating a, uh, a sphere. It's, uh, it's not actually computing the 150 spheres that we should now have on here. So because this is where our points are, what I'm going to do is hit tab and throw down a point jitter, just like that. And then our spheres should all move around. So uh, let's just go to like 0 0.5, 0 0.3. So now we've just, uh, you know, broken it up a little bit. So yeah, we've just scattered a couple of uh, little spheres around. And now, okay, what we are going to do is, because all of the spheres are pretty much the same, um, what I'm going to do is let's hit tab and type attribute create. And Houdini is quite clever where if you hit tab and you just start typing anything, just like that, I just typed at create and it came up with attribute create. So you don't have to type the whole name, just like parts of it. Um, so the attribute that I'm going to create is called p scale. And you'll notice everything changed because inherently this is looking for a p scale. And then um, what 
we are going to do is we're going to make it a local variable. Uh, just enable, just check that. Um, and then what we're going to do is type in an attribute randomize. And there I just typed in at rand and it came up. And let's plug that in. And then let's, instead of where it says attribute name, instead of CD, let's type P scale. And you'll see some of our spheres got a little bit bigger. And that's because the max value we should specify that we can specify over here. The copy stamp goes um, a lot further. You can rarely customize this thing, but for this tutorial, I won't be going too far into it. So let's have a look what this looks like through our camera. And there we go, we have uh, some more interesting stuff happening. So let's just scale this to say 1.6 so we can, so some of our spheres break the edges. Um, and for now, Let's, uh, let's give this a render. Save scene and snap what we had and let's click render. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty interesting. Uh, what I'm going to do now is quickly just get rid of our backdrop. Uh, I'm just going to create two grids uh, so that it's a little bit easier to move around. So I'm just going to take a snap. That's what we had. This is what we have now. A little bit more interesting. Might get rid of some things for simplicity's sake. But, uh, but yeah, for now, let me just create the grids. So perspective view. I'm going to jump back up and hide our backdrop. And then what I'm going to do is, let's just hit tab, type grid. And let's jump inside. Let's make it 50 by 50. And then I am just going to duplicate this Call this floor and this wall. Let's rotate this one to the XY plane. Hit T for transform and transform this back. Something like that. Let's get, let's get intimate with it now. Okay, so if we get our camera, let's make sure that this is pointing the right way. There we go. And let's just try find a decent vanishing point for this grid. So right now it's kind of breaking uh, this line over here. So we either need to go forwards or backwards. And I think for our sake, we might have to go um, backwards, but let's see how far we can push it. Um, so right now I wanna move some things, but I also wanna look at the camera. So what you can do is um, you can either press Command and two or Control and two, and it will split your pane. Command one does the same. Command three will split it into three. Command four into four. Uh, or you can come up here and just go single view or two views stacked. Uh, so right now I'm just going to jump into our camera. And let's see how close we can get this. Don't want it to be too close because it might interact with shadows. Let's go something like that. I'm just trying to make the edge kind of break our geometry in a interesting way as opposed to on the same lines. Um, so let's, uh, let's have a render and see what that looks like. We are blocking a lot of light. Okay. Scene view. Let's move this back, way back. Find a mid ground somewhere here. Okay, so it's somewhat interesting, but before we get into uh, shading 
and building some materials. Uh, I just want to play with the lighting one more time because I'm not super happy with it. I think we might just need to get a bit more soft shadows because everything is pretty hard right now. So I'm just going to press stop. And what I'm going to do is let's grab a small Studio 5 2K DSAT blur. And let's pump this up to something like 4 and 1 because it's a lot softer now. Ho oh, ho! Oh. That feels better. Let's transform this around a little bit. I actually like the light angle. Let's just change it a little bit, try to get a bit more light on the back wall. Cool. This is a good base to start creating some materials and textures. So I will see you guys in the next tutorial. We will go over some procedural material building and uh, pick a color scheme. Um, and then we will start rendering this guy for real. Cool. I'll see you then.